السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters A very important question Who is your mother? Have you ever thought about it? Your mother is indeed the one who gave birth to you but more important than that, your mother is the one who was chosen by Allah. Neither did she ask that she have a particular child known as you. Nor did you ask that you have a particular mother known as her. That final detail was chosen by Allah and Allah alone. So bear that in mind. You are a human. You might think you're very intelligent. You've earned a lot. You've achieved a lot. You are powerful. You are different. You are unique. You are amazing. You don't realize part of your challenge and your test that Allah chose for you is that mother of yours, that mother of yours and the father, but primarily the mother, because the prophet Muhammad peace be upon him has told us three times more about the mother than the father when it comes to the kindness and the goodness of companionship and and so on he says ummuka 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 i'm sure you know that we probably will come to that hadith just now but primarily as man grows older one of the first people that he takes for granted is his mother and the mother continues you see if i were to take you back prior to the time when you were conceived by your mother and i the reality is your mother, your parents were probably, probably in the case of the majority, perhaps making dua to have a child. Many times people, they make dua, oh Allah bless us with a child. And in the case where people have not made a dua, but suddenly they felt they conceived subhanallah. What happened? They then prayed and made dua after that. Oh Allah, make it easy for me. Give me a good child. Bless me with this child, that child and so on. Sometimes. Because of human error, people make mistakes in the du'as that they make. Do you know what that means? You don't realize by saying, Oh Allah, give me a son. I want a son. I only want a son. I don't want a daughter. I want a son. Oh, I want a daughter. You don't realize that you can say more correctly, Oh Allah, bless me with a son. But no matter what you bless me with, I will be happy. Because there are people out there who neither have boys nor girls. Ask them. They'll tell you boy or girl is besides the point. I want a child. May Allah bless those without children with children. Amen. So it's amazingly unique because Allah Almighty is the one who responds to that prayer. We believe in him. The mother is excited. But guess what? As soon as she conceives, her health begins to change. What happens? Mostly there's negative that comes in. She has morning sickness. She might not feel well. She has to check her pressure. She has to worry about her heartburn at some point. She has to be concerned about her sleep at a point. And what are you doing? You are comfy, relaxed, beautiful, floating in beautifully conditioned liquid that is absolutely superb. Your environment is unique and you're busy going around and at 120 days you start kicking as well. Subhanallah, the soul is blown. Here is your mother. The heavier you're becoming, the happier she's becoming. The more burdensome you're becoming, the more excited she is about receiving you. Subhanallah, that's the first person you take for granted. And I know from amongst us, there are those whose mothers are unreasonable, totally unreasonable. But how do you treat her? That's the question. She can be unreasonable. Are you unreasonable? You might want to distance from some toxic mothers, which happens at times, but to what limit, to what extent will you still consider her a person whom paradise will be achieved through her service? Many people say, no, my mother's really, really so bad, so terrible. I don't want to have anything to do with her. It depends. Obviously, I'm speaking generally it depends what she's done. And another thing, even if she's done something bad, you need to ask Allah Almighty to guide her, to grant her goodness. That's the minimum care. When you see a drunkard on the street, when you see a person who's done something really bad, your concern should be such that you reach out to them with a good dua. You see a person who swore at you instead of swearing them back, you can pray for them. 
You can ask Allah to guide them. Tomorrow their hearts will be softened. And if it was your dua that softened the heart, Wallahi, you've contributed towards empowering community and society towards the correct development. Subhanallah. Look at community. Why? We're all good people, happy, smiling at each other. And we're all okay, assisting one another, reaching out to one another because we care for one another as an ummah. It doesn't mean that if you make one mistake or a big mistake, that people should knock you out completely. One of the disasters we are facing in many societies is those who have served time in correctional services or what is known as prisons in other less fancy countries. I can tell you they come out and they are not fitting in society and community because people excommunicate them, not realizing that this was just a person who served some time correctional services. They corrected themselves. They were in prison for a while. Now that they're out, give them a chance, give them a chance, a careful chance. But that chance needs to be given. When I say a careful chance, I mean, you watch, you see, if you notice that there's no change. Yes, you are right in perhaps trying to minimize some contact, some relation to a degree. But you cannot suddenly say, no, I don't want to have anything to do with this person. They could be anyone. It could be you tomorrow. You might have been accused wrongly of something, spent time in prison. Does that mean it's the end of the world for you? Similarly, what happens, my beloved brothers and sisters is within ourselves, if our parents have done something wrong in life, it's not the end of the world. I do know and I will make an exception when it comes to a father or a mother, mostly fathers. Well, when I say mostly, I mean, it's very rare, but it does happen from among those who do it. It's mostly fathers, fathers who have abused their daughters or their children, sometimes to sexual abuse in that particular case. Yes, we deal with it differently. I cannot come and tell you, no, you know what? Relax, take it easy. It's okay. That's your father. We have to protect you, my beloved child, more than anyone else. This adult abused his status as a father. So in that case, I'm just showing you there is an exception. But when it comes to the fact that they might be harsh, they might be strict, they might not like much that, that you do and so on. They might be picking on everything you say or do. That doesn't make them evil people. That's your father. Generally, he would like to see you succeed. Some of them are different. Subhanallah, different in the sense that the way they deal with you is different from what you might have learned at school. Oh, your father should play with you and spend time with you and communicate with you and gel with you and go out with you and take you here and there. Some fathers are so busy trying to earn a living so that you can eat and they don't have time for all of that. And then you hold that against them. And if they were to come for that, they wouldn't have had something for you to eat. So which one do you want? It's difficult. Excuse them. Alhamdulillah. You might want to communicate. And communication is important no matter who you are. You can be a father or a child. Communication is absolutely important. But your mother, your mother is someone chosen by Allah as a test for you. And my beloved mothers, your child is someone whom Allah has chosen as a test for you. You need to spend time with your child and the children respect your mother. Minimum respect them. Make dua for them. Ask Allah to soften their hearts, to keep them healthy. Ask Allah to bless them because Allah created you. That's why you are here today. And Allah chose the channel through which he created you. And that's your mother. Allah has created a natural love within the heart of a mother for a child. One day when the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was passing by, a lady who was breastfeeding her child, the Prophet peace be upon him says, do you ever think this woman would throw this particular child in the fire? And they said, no. So he says, well, the, the Allah Almighty is 70 times more merciful upon us than this woman is upon that particular child or is more merciful upon us than this particular child. So do you really th this mother towards the child? Do you really think that Allah is going to cast you and I to hellfire? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah.